In the latest Formula 2 race weekend at Baku, there were two race winners, Yuri Phipps, who won two of the three races and Robert Schwarzman who won the other one after winning quite a few last year. Schwarzman is contracted to the Ferrari Driver Academy and though he has quite a reasonable chance on a Formula 1 seat in the coming years, so in this video I am going to ask the question, what does the future hold for Robert Schwarzman? Robert Schwarzman started go-karting in 2007 when he was only 8 years old. He drove in karting until 2013 and he won 4 championships in those 7 years. A pretty successful but not excellent go-karting career and he started in single seaters in the 2014 Italian Formula 4 championship. He drove around in different Formula 4 championships in 2015 as well, winning a total of 2 races while finishing 3rd in the Italian Formula 4 championship. In 2016 and 2017 Robert drove in different Formula Renault championships winning a few races and ending up 8th, 6th and 3rd in those championships. At the start of 2018, Robert switched teams from RSGP in Formula Renault to the legendary Perma team and he would drive in European Formula 3 as well as the Toyota Racing Series. In TRS he was in a championship fight with Richard Verschoor and Marx Armstrong and although Marx Armstrong was the class of the field in the first 3 rounds of the season, he didn't deliver in the final 2 rounds, leading to Schwarzman winning over Verschoor on only 5 points and that could have played out very different had Verschoor not had a gearbox failure in the 3rd race of the season. Robert won his first championship and he would start the European F3 season with a lot of hope and confidence. Eventually, he won two races in the season at the Red Bull Ring and the Nürburgring. Robert was the best of the rookies that year and finished third in the championship ahead of the likes of Kwon Yu Chao and Jehan Daruvala, who were in their second year already. Then it was announced he would drive in the first season of FIA Formula 3 alongside former rivals Marx Armstrong and just mentioned Daruvala. Robert dominated the championship, taking two out of eight pole positions and not finishing out of the points once in the races he finished. He won three races and took six more podiums, meaning he was on the podium more than half of the time in a spec series. He was with Perma, so that's obviously quite an advantage. And he won the championship in the last round. After this, the step up to Formula 2 was understandable. But before I'm going to talk about his F2 performances, I would really appreciate it if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel and like this video. It would just help me in general, so if you've done it already, thanks. And otherwise, make sure to do it. Robert would drive in Formula 2 alongside Mick Schumacher in a season that started in Austria, where he qualified 8th and finished on the podium in the feature race. In the sprint race he came up from 6th to 4th and after the first round he was 2nd in the championship only behind Callum Island. Round 2 started way better for the Russian winning the feature race after making this absolute class move on Guan Yu Zhao. He spun out in the 2nd race but in Hungary he won the feature race once again leading to him having a 24 point lead over the number 2 in the championship at that moment, Callum Island. It was clear Robert was the championship favourite and there already were talks about in what F1 seat he would end up in 2021 but for him it would be more important to focus on the coming rounds at Silverstone and Barcelona. But you can say those rounds failed. Robert only scored points in one of the four races at Silverstone, also colliding with his teammate while being 1-2 in the second round sprint race. And although Mick could still bring the car home to P2, Robert dropped out of the points and had to perform at Barcelona to be in the championship fight again as he was third in the championship at that point, 21 points behind the leader Callum Arle. At Catalonia, Robert finished P2 in the feature race and one round later in Spa he won the sprint race. At the six rounds in between Spa and Bahrain, Robert only scored 8 points and coming into Bahrain, Robert dropped down to 5th in the championship chasing his teammate Mick Schumacher who was in the lead by 51 points. At the first weekend, he won the sprint race and coming into the final race weekend he was officially out of the title fight. Around this time it was announced Mick Schumacher and Nikita Mazepin would be joining Haas and there wouldn't be a place for Robert so he'd be returning in Formula 2 with Prema alongside Oscar Piastri after finishing 4th in the championship in 2020. Of the 3 rounds this year, Schwarzman is in P3 in the championship and he has won his first sprint race at Baku as said in the intro after starting from pole position. Robert dominated the race with a 5 second lead over a very fast Dan Tictum. In the other 2 rounds he hasn't really performed to the levels everyone expected. Being the highest returnee in Formula 2, people thought he would walk away with the championship but up until this point it doesn't seem so. The next race is coming up at Silverstone and that's not his fastest track as we saw last year when he just didn't have enough confidence and pace in the first weekend and round 2 there was also miserable as he collided with Mick Schumer and Robert only scored 8 points at Monza after a failed qualifying and in Sochi he didn't score any points after just having a shitty weekend overall so it will probably not be a walk in the park for the rest of the year for Robert Schwarzman. But depending on what he does this year, what does the future hold for the Russian? If Schwarzman can overcome the 
12 points deficit and hold the lead for the entire season to win the championship which is possible he will have to be in Formula 1 with a Ferrari powered team as he obviously is in the FDA having tested the SF18 multiple times at Fiorano along with some other Ferrari driver academy members. If I would have to choose between Alpha and Haas I would say Alpha is the best shout as I don't expect any of the Haas boys leaving in the coming few years. For that to happen either Kimi or Giovinazzi has to leave and I'm sure at least one of those if not both will leave Alfa Romeo and Formula 1 at the end of this season. One thing to keep in mind is that in the Sauber Academy Theo Pocher is performing amazing and he will surely be keen on that Alpha seat as soon as possible as well. If Robert doesn't perform in Formula 2 this year it will be way more difficult for him to reach F1 and if he has a third job he will have to absolutely dominate although I don't think he will get to F1 at that point as for example Nick De Vries was the Formula 2 champion in his third year but F1 teams just weren't keen to sign him anymore. I'm sure this would have been different had he been a bit more lucky in 2018 to finish in the top 3 as all the top 3 drivers from that season graduated to Formula 1 which obviously is still not a guaranteeing anything. But he surely would have had a better chance on it. Anyway getting back to Robert, if he won't reach F1 he will surely be able to compete and set results in sports cars, GT cars or maybe Formula E. What has been the path for a lot of drivers who performed their F2 but just didn't reach F1 like Nick De Vries or Oliver Rowland. So to summarize this video, Robert Swartman has had a great junior career and if he can perform in Formula 2 this year and win the title, he has a reasonable shot at an Alfa Romeo seat in 2022. But if he doesn't perform this year, he will most likely be destined for Formula E sports cars or GT cars. So Robert, if you see and listen to this, make sure to perform this year. It will help your chances in the future. Thank you very much for watching this video. I'd really appreciate it if you can like, subscribe and comment your opinion on Robert Swartman down in the comments below. Don't forget to follow me on my socials, links of them will be in the description and I hope to see all of you later on my channel. Bye bye.